Welcome back to Run It Up. Hey, what's up? What's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome back to Run It Up. I'm here in the studio with uh, Jason Sumrall. That's right. I'm so happy to be here. So uh, what we're doing today, that's right, Run It Up Apprentice. I'm here with Martin Campman. Martin's going to play some poker, and I'm going to uh, give him some tips after the decisions are made, of course. We start aggressive, or we should... Uh... Well, we're gonna we're gonna start easy. We're gonna start okay, easy. you're gonna, gonna start. start okay, all right. Pretty good flop I, I, for us. I thought about just going at it, taking a taking a go at it. Uh, we're gonna bet at it. So, so uh, what we're gonna do here, as far as like what the plan is, is uh, I'm gonna let you make decisions, and we're gonna talk about them after. So, if you want, you can kind of like vocalize what your reasons are, why why, why you think you should do one thing over another, okay. and then we'll be able to kind of talk about that from there. Okay. I'm I'm hoping here that uh, that they don't have a better kicker. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that is. I figured that they they'd raise preflop if they. Uh, if they if they had right it was a limp pot that's a good that is definitely a good a good uh, a, a true thing and uh this guy I don't know we actually we actually know this guy he's uh, running a warrior in is fact oh. okay so here we are let me let me uh maybe just check and then call it or value bet i don't know what what you you probably saying. it's it's tough it's a tough decision cuz i'm hoping he's going to try to steal maybe he might and then i'll just call it flat so I actually, I actually really don't mind this check here because it gives him a chance to bluff if he has like king jack and spades. But yeah. I think it all comes down to what you think he is capable of. Like, what what does he show up with in this spot? Does he have more aces and queens, or does he have like more um, no pair Just hands? Does he have more like king jack, jack ten, or spades? Yeah. And I think given that you bet out twice, yeah. I think you've acted so strong that I think that it's much more likely that he. Uh, has something, yeah. you know, because he's ha already had to call twice. As far as preflop goes, because we we're talking about that as well, yeah. I think that uh, when it goes limp, limp around like that, you're right that you correctly identify that you probably have the best hand, right? Because yeah. Ace Ten of Diamonds is probably going to be the best hand in that spot. But because you're out of position, you really can't do very much. You're kind of handcuffed by. You wouldn't raise it. No, I think checking is fine for. Uh, it's your very first hand at the table, yeah. so I think checking is okay. Uh, if you had been at the table for a while and everyone was very limpy, then I think that is fine. To but raise uh, it. to raise, yeah. yeah. But I, I think it's fine. Check very first hand. You know, you don't know uh, what's going on yet. I'll also just remind you. Know, let's oh. make sure we. <laughs> the, sound, <laughs> people, yeah. the people want to hear Martin Kevin. You know, I just say it. All right, I'm gonna call it. Especially now we got two people in it. I like it. Oh. Seems fine to me. Even though he did raise a little bit bigger, I, I still think it's fine to to call here. Of course. Oh, here's a four. Not so close. <laughs> so close. <laughs> huh? I like how you did that. It just not. It's okay. I'm gonna just check for this. Here's the four coming. So I would have. Uh, uh, I would have. Oh, you would have bet it. I would have considered betting. Not necessarily saying you have to bet, but I've considered betting because when it goes check check to us there, yeah. it's possible two fours are the best hand. Yeah. A and uh, so if it goes check check to us there, and they both just have like ace jack and whatever else, we could arguably bet. I think the same. Yeah, I think now. we have the same. I think it's up to you. I think you have the same decision here as to whether or not you want to bet or check. Your hand could definitely be the best hand, right? It's yeah. possible. I'm just, yeah. What's what about betting size, like? I think I think that's I think that's fine actually. Like you're you're definitely betting towards the larger side of the spectrum, but I think it's okay. Um, you know, like the Score. the nice job. So you probably you probably had the best hand, yeah. you know. But uh, as far as the sizing question goes, like it really kind of depends on, you know, like tell me the kinds of hands you would play that way that would check flop and then bet two fifty on the turn. What kind of hands would you have? Like king queen, you would have ki some kings you have right, some kings that check or back just flop. The, the queen that. Well, the king, the king came on the turn, right? Right. So. It was queen eight three king. Yeah. So the the problem is for someone like me, I would ask, what kind of hands does Martin play this way that he now wants to bet two fifty with? And there aren't a lot of them, king right? Jack. Yeah, you could have king. You could definitely have kings, but you also have a lot of hands that are just like hands close to what you had, ace highs, like give ups, things you just decided not to go with for whatever reason. So to me, I perceive that bet size to be inconsistent with your logic, with the story you're trying to tell me. So what I think it's too big. I think it's a little too big. Yeah, okay. I, I think you want to kind of sell the story of like, okay, I have a mediumly okay hand, and then you bet two dollars. That story is very reasonable. And here's the other thing: if you think about it like this, let's say that he folds. 
folds 90% of the time to 250 yeah. how much of a percentage of the time do you think he would fold to $2? It's oh. probably very close yeah. to 90 and you're just giving yourself a better chance, a better price to win. Yeah. I'm the good voice over here. This is the this is this is the you're playing well voice. When you start playing badly, I'll go on that side. Then I'll give you the devil. That's <laughs> oh, somebody. Somebody pushed big pot. King and ten does not look like it's going to be Ten's doing too up, well. Maybe? Uh, no. The board paired, but not the one you needed. Yeah, that's, that that sucks to hitting two pairs and then some guy goes all in on you and, and there's a flush on the on the table. That, that yeah. Is. So uh, we were uh, for those of you that don't know how uh, how much poker do you play? Obviously, you play on Ultimate Poker uh, every. Every Sunday, I've seen you in that tournament for months now. But, yeah, uh, still waiting for the results. It's still uh, one I was, day. I've been so close so many times, just busting outside of the bubble. But yeah, I think uh, grinding next Sunday. Well, next Sunday I'll be in Canada, but Sunday after that, then you'll be back. That's looking that's for that crown. I'm gonna do it. You know, I won a tournament recently. I won. Uh, I won a twenty dollars buy-in tournament on Monday. It was uh, an amazing thing. I bluffed a guy eight, eight high on the river. Eight high. I know there's three diamonds, four straight. I was I was all in. Nice. I was very courageous, and it worked how, out. How many people were in it? 22. Nice. That's it. 22, 21 people, and then the champ. As it worked out. That's right. I like I like the the way it's going so far. We're, we're up. Yeah, six dollars. That's right. Cr straight, crushing it. Straight profit. I think I think I think you've uh, I think you've played well so far. I don't think there's. I mean the the whole dis the, your your decision to, to to lead with Ace Ten. I think on the flop is also something that we could talk about. Yeah. But uh, I think all in all, it's definitely fine. I think it's. I uh, think my problem sometimes is um, with the cash with the tournaments. I know that I gotta stay uh, patient. Patient because if you mess up. This tournament's over. Right, like the yeah. The cash game, you're sitting there getting cold cans for a little bit, and all of a sudden, ah, fuck it, let's raise Yeah, that's game. right, that's right. Fuck it, let's raise it. Before you know it, oh, let's do it. You got a continuation bet. Oh, that's, I didn't get it. He's calling. That's how they oh, get you. just got to bluff it. And before you know it, that's half your stack. That's how they get you. Yeah. That's it. I think I think, uh, I think. I just need somebody behind me with a whip. You know are, are, you, uh, are you excited for this weekend's fights? So there are some good ones this weekend. Henderson Thompson is fighting in Chicago. And uh, Cerrone, your your friend Donald Cerrone is fighting. Uh, actually, some guy I've never heard of before. And uh, the, the to me, the people's main event is Sergio Sergio Pettis is fighting uh, is fighting Bruce Leroy. How exciting is, is that? that? The people's main event. That is the people's main event. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's just play your hand here. Here's a little raise here coming up. I like this. I mean, you are a fa you're likely to have the best hand against a guy who's just limping, and you know we have a Call pretty it. good hand here, all in all. Can't complain about the flop. Either. Pretty good, pretty good flop. How do you like the betting size? Would you go four times big blind or? Uh, I, I like what you did pre-flop. I think that was fine. I think you're in the ballpark for sure. I'm going to go with the pot size. Uh, how do you like that? Too much? I think that's probably a little too much. I mean, I, I actually don't mind it because it looks weak to me. So if he has a hand like two sevens, he's like, what is this guy doing here? He is, it's good if he thinks you're weak because this to me reads weak, not strong. When you raise pot and then bet pot, I would not think you have it. But it uh, turns out you do have it. Uh-oh. No, this is not. Uh oh, this is a. This is a yes. <laughs> this is a good thing. Oh, well, he's got some. Yeah, oh. we have got a pretty good head too. Fuck it, I think all in or call. We gotta go all in, right? What do you think? I, I think both decisions have their merits, but I just would tip pick one or the other before you time out. That's a good, good idea. <laughs> that's a, just that's don't time out. Idea. I actually think you should call on this spot because I think you might have induced this by and betting make, pot. And then making an, a, another bet. Making right. Bet again. Exactly. Oh, he's got a, oh ah, damn it. Womp, womp. Damn it. You played it well, though. So you wanted me to call it and then hope that he's going to bet again? I, then... I think that by betting pot and having him check raise, I think that you might have made him do this with weak hands. Yeah. So let's say he has a hand like ace three and you shove. What is he going to do with ace three? He's going to just fold, right? But if he has a hand like, but if you, if you, if you shove, he's going to fold. But if you call, there's a chance he might try to bluff. That's what I do. That's, that's it. <laughs> At least you know. <laughs> At least you know. At least that's it. We yeah. got to get some more chips back. <laughs> You could, I, I think you could just min raise this. That would be fine as well. Yeah. The, the other problem with playing this end is not only does it look like you're tilting, but you kind of are a little tilting. Oh, I, I don't like... mind. They know it. They can know it. <laughs> that, that's not a good thing, though. <laughs> uh, but yeah. And so when they think I'm tilting, you that's got when it. I pull out the aces. Nice. That's what Phil Helmuth likes to do. I don't know Phil Helmuth, but he's uh, he likes to trap people. That's what he likes to say. Trap people by playing bad or? Uh, he's uh, <laughs> interesting. Interesting play. Bold poker. 
But uh, I think you played the H I can pretty well. I, I don't think I would have played it exactly the same way, but I think that once you bet and he check raises you there, think about the story he's telling you, right? So he called preflop and then he's che and he checked and now he's saying he has a good hand or he thinks you don't have very much. Because our hand is so good, I think I'd like to call and pretty much say we're never folding on any turn card. Not a king, not a queen. There's no turn card we're going to fold to. What about the eight? I mean, he hit the straight. It does, if he has an eight, he can still have ace three, ace deuce. He could have three six. He could have ace five there are still so many other hands he could have that i think uh i think it's fine to i personally hate when people do this to me <laughs> this is what i do all the time by the way <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually like this raise i think it's good we're in position we have a pretty solid hand i think it's totally fine straight draw coming up yep we have the good end of a straight draw as well so what would you have bet before on the jack would you bet i, I would have i would have bet closer to like two thirds i think two thirds so I think like a dollar and a quarter is a good is a good range. So we'll do a dollar and a quarter right there. Yep. So I think that's a good size here for you. I think. Uh, ooh. Well, <laughs> it sucks, but you know all we have is Jack High after all, and he's gonna have so many hands that are like eight seven six seven nine seven. He's, he's even like Jack Ten has this destroyed, you know. So yeah. there are so many hands he has us crushed with that uh, the way that we the way that we counter what he just did there is by having good hands sometimes, and we do, right? All you did preflop is he limped, you raised, and then on the flop you bet and he shoved. Yeah. So we have two tens in better, we have aces, we have kings, we have sets, we have two pairs, we have lots of good hands ourselves that we can we we will just call and he'll just be in a bad bad shape against that. That's yeah. how we defend yeah. against so what, what he did. So what do you think he had right there? Yeah. He had two pairs. Well, or it's, draw on a pair it's it's we, we we don't know for sure what he had obviously because we haven't seen him play often enough to to know what he what we think he has. But uh, I would say that he probably had some some combination of club draws or uh, pairs like eight not you know either it could be two pair it could be straight draw and pair could be a better straight draw and a flush draw you know something like that. Even when I think about calling, huh? Jack seven of hearts. No, thank you. Just say. Oh, I'm, I'm, I was glad he raised it because if he didn't, I would have raised it right here. Man. Okay, I think that's fine. Right, so you think I should have raised him? Uh, no, you could have called. You could have called him the button if you wanted, but it's fine. Disciplined poker. Don't listen to me on this. Oh. This is a uh, that's an advanced call, <laughs> or bad depending on how you look at it. <laughs> uh, bad call. It's advanced or bad, one or the other. It depends Do you on have how a you thing feel. For Jack seven. Or what? Jack seven of hearts on the button. It's a very pretty hand. They're the same color. You know, the same shape. It's very pretty. This hand also is very yeah, pretty. I, I like it. I like it. I'll go with it. You like the preflop? I, I think you can s you can make your preflop a little bit smaller, just but it's not it's not like a you're not doing anything like awful by any means, but it's kind of like an inefficient uh, what you're doing by just hitting pot. Like you're you could just like cut off the. But it is the, faster though. It is faster. That is <laughs> that is you have me there. That is for sure true. Let's see if we get to see a flop here. Beautiful five-way flop so with a you beautiful bet? hand. Just a dollar. Flat? I think a dollar would have been fine with a post behind you. A dollar is fine. So, I would normally I would say I try to represent the ace, but with four people in it, I'm yeah. just gonna play it down. I think your logic is great here. I uh, I think that's it's a very it's very uh, the way the way that I would approach the situation is is it likely that all of these four people don't have an ace? Yeah. And given that we don't even have an ace, like I think that's very that's, unlikely that that's nobody a weak has bet, it. Uh, that is that is a very small bet. Usually when people do that, I just try to. You want to go after it? I I I can't tell you not to. <laughs> Give it a stab. You can try if you want. I mean, you know, you don't feel, don't have to feel like you have to, but if you want to, you can go I for feel it. A little pressure from you. <laughs> Four dollars? That too much? That's. That's not really way too much. I mean, you know, it's not like a crazy amount because you're threatening half of his stack. He only has $11. So if he wants to continue, he's going to have to have something pretty good Everybody's here. He good. might even fold a king to this, you know. All he did is bet a quarter. Ooh. Nice job. Nice job. You made an extra quarter. Yep. If you just bet, you wouldn't have made that sweet, sweet quarter right there. If he, of what? Because he bet a quarter. He, yeah. you know, oh, you, yeah, made, yeah, you yeah. made an extra quarter so than I you would have. I could have actually probably taken it down with a continuation bidder. Right? Yeah, almost for sure. If, if, if everyone else is folding for a quarter, even he would have probably folded <laughs> to your, like, you know. So now, from now on, it's quarter continuation. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's, it, kind of, it kind of shows the concept of, like, what uh, b the, the betting spectrum kind of accomplishes, right? Their hands were so shitty, they wouldn't even place right, the board. Right, right. So it, it shows that maybe that your hand is isn't that great, but maybe if you bet $1.50 in that spot, that might be a, the thing that works out well for you. Also, think 
think about this. Let's say you bet a dollar fifty and one person calls yeah. and the turn is like a nine of spades, so you turn a flush draw. That's a great spot for you to bet again. That was a very disciplined fold, very good disciplined fold. Out of position, you, right there at the nine seven of hearts. You didn't like it? Or? No, I liked it. It was uh -huh. good. I'm not being sarcastic here, okay? Uh -huh. I don't have the energy to be sarcastic. This is this is true real talk I'm not coaching. Sure we're doing that. The other, Jack seven, you were like you were that, feeling that Jack seven. Yeah, that you? was position though. You have the button too, and no one can turn down the button. You know, I, I mean? think it's the hearts. You like the hearts. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. My favorite hand is actually three five of spades. Ooh. It's true. Ooh, look at you go. Where's everybody going? They, they they're they all afraid me. of you. Yeah, exactly. So I just want to make it. 0.75, right? Yep. Where's the point at? Oh. Okay, that's good enough. Close, close <laughs> enough. You can. I you can't can, read your keyboard too well. Yeah, you can. Uh, you could uh, drag the bar or like tap the the thing or something. Uh, also, min raising is fine as well because the guy in the small blind has only ten dollars. So you could just make it fifty cents, and that's fine as well. Yeah. And that's really fast. That is the fastest way to get to where it is. The fastest, but kind of weak though, right? Yeah, but if you do it with all your hands, then it won't make a difference, you know? If you just say, I'm going to just min-raise all my buttons, which is a thing that I do a decent amount of time. You do if you, in cash games too? Cash games look way less often than in tournaments. In that's tournaments, I mean, in tournaments, I, 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 def I do a lot more, especially the later in the tournaments. Yeah, because. then you're definitely right about that. But What's your reason for doing it? I'll let you know if you're right. I mean, early in the tournament, I usually do more. I usually do like more. I don't never just click race it because... Then you're always going to get called. Sure, because your stacks are deeper in yeah. that in that in that regard. And the blinds are so small compared, you know. But when you're later in the tournament and there's Andes and stuff like that, you know, people are watching their chips way more, you know. So that's why you know you, you can often win, yep. the, win the blinds just by click racing. You got it right. Yeah, I'm impressed. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I like it. It was good. Yeah. As as. Uh, as effective stacks get get shallower, click race. perfect. Yeah, but I think in the cash good. games, you know, don't you think click race is a little weak? I, I do usually, uh, but unless, it, I mean, unless you, I'm sometimes playing heads up, I do the click race. But. Yeah, I think that's fine. You know, the fact that the that the small blind has only ten dollars is why I think that you can get away with it and it's okay. okay. Um, I, I do think the seventy five cents is probably a little bit better, but you know, you also can use the numpad if you want on the right side of the keyboard. On the right side, there's oh. a hole. So. We didn't do any kind of tutorial. Martin Cameron yeah, doesn't I need gotta, a tutorial. I, 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 I <laughs> gotta figure out this computer out. Here. We we sit down and say, go. Oh, look at that little turn card. That's a good one for us. Yeah. Welcome to the team eight. So, so what do you put him on? He could have a high. He could have a four. He could have king high if he's really ambitious. If he's really feeling his oats over there. Could be. I like your size actually. I think this is perfect. Um, also, you have to think about what are the hands we're going to want to bet in this spot. We're going to want to bet 9-10, 9-7, queen-10, hearts. We're betting so widely here with hands that are pretty bad. Nice. Like that, that. Uh, yeah, that's really good for us. Because remember, we're thinking about what he has. So we think he, if we're thinking he has either uh, like a four, which might try to bluff at this. He could have ace high, king high, which would be might think he has the best hand. Yeah. So pretty good river for us, well, obviously. Ooh, wow. Right. I, d I think I'm just gonna call this. You know, right? Yeah, I think this is a very interesting decision between calling and raising. Like, I, I don't, I can't imagine he has too many jacks, but he's not gonna call us with much worse. Like, you know, he's not gonna call us here with a king high or something if we raise. So, I think your logic makes sense. Now you're making me feel like raising it. No, I think calling is okay. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Oh, Ooh. oh, just four jacks. What a raising. lucky <laughs> runner! What a luck box this guy is. Yeah. You had nine high on the flop, and you run a runner to a full house to run into his four of a kind, and he still only made three dollars. Fucking, fucking Josh over there. That's right. Go to tilt mode a little bit. Do you say that live also when you play? Do you huh? tell them? Do you tell them live when yeah, you're tilted? Yeah, I let them know. You let, no. you let them know. Now let them know the it's coming. Three bet me. <laughs> <laughs> and then boom, I get lucky. There you go. Like, like that. Okay. Just like that. I like the spot. I feel like you've got very unlucky so far. We had we had uh, we had we had been good with the ace jack, and then we had a full house. What else? Oh yeah, the ace jack. The ace, the ace jack was. Point. You played perfectly though. I mean, as far as. You know, the money goes. You got the money in good. Go for it. See? Nice. Go for here. 
Well, I think I think still, I think, still, still got a little way to go. My my general so far, having now watched you play for twenty minutes, I would say that your general sizings are a little bit too big. Not like crazily too big, but just like probably twenty percent lower than you're making them, and you'd be like right in the perfect optimal wheelhouse, right? Okay. Because you want to make them big enough that you can effectively represent bluffs in some spots, yeah. but not so big as to necessarily like drive out your opponents to to a degree where you're like almost overplaying or over committing money okay. to the pot. That just is un it's just inefficient. Is literally. Well, the reason is. why I often do, uh, usually, let's say, you know, when you race with ace king and then you don't hit shit, and then <laughs> you continuation bet, they call, and, you know, keep continuation betting all the way to the river is sometimes, you know, scary. Yeah. So that's why I, I like it better to sometimes make a big one on the fly. Yeah, so it drives them out right then and there. Right then and there if I don't hit it. It's certainly uh it's certainly a common perception I think that you want to try to that you want to do that and not, you know, live the life of like bluffing three I streets. Kind of, you know, I <laughs> feel like, like sometimes I'm just spending huh? half the pot on the flop because the fl pot is already small and oh, I got my hand up in the camera. And then uh, <laughs> It's fine. Then they, I don't they never love really that. know for sure <laughs> if they had some or not, you know. Right, you know right. What I mean? No, for sure. I definitely know what you mean. I, I would say I would say that the the place you want to evolve your thought process to, instead of thinking like, oh well, I don't I, I don't have very much of Ace King and I'm uncomfortable here. The 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 way that you get comfortable is by playing in that in that situation many times. Then you can kind of start realizing like, okay, well, what does my opponent have in this spot, and what is what does it mean my opponent has here, and how does my Ace King do compared to what he has, and so yeah, on, and all of that. Just a click race, just for fun. Yeah, right here. yeah, it makes sense. You have a good price. I wouldn't fold. I think starting with a check makes sense. You can decide to be either aggressive right here, or you could also just call. I think both options are, are very reasonable. He only bet a quarter, so I think it is If he fine. goes a quarter again, I'm, I'm raising him. I'm telling you right now. Okay. Well, you promised it. Oh, it might be too big, especially. Well, I want to scare him off, like you just said, right? That's true. This is what we want to accomplish. So, But I think this makes sense. I mean, I, I think, uh, I, think I, I like the play. Okay. Four would have saved me, though, huh? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like it. I definitely think that I like raising much more than calling on the turn uh, because let's say he has a hand like King Deuce and he's just betting a quarter and doesn't realize what he's doing there. We want him to fold better than six high. I couldn't really call that. Could right. I? No, no, no. Calling would be bad. But I'm just telling you, you did good by raising. Everybody left. Everybody left us. <laughs> I don't know what to do. It's Martin Ketman dressed like a ninja. I would run I, I if I saw Martin Ketman dressed like a ninja. If you showed up to my house like that, I would never let you in. <laughs> it's, it would never happen. Huh? And the other guy is the sock puppet. He doesn't know what he's doing over there. Sock puppet avatars, they're always on drugs. That's the guy that's been taking all my money. Right? That's it. That's the guy yeah, that took yeah. But he got, too, right? in, he got it in awfully. He had 6-7. He probably thought he had it straight already or something. He didn't know what he was doing. King 5, you play king highs on the button? Of course. Of course. Of course. Wow. <laughs> I knew I liked you for a reason. King high, of course. This is three-handed, you know? Yeah, yeah. People, no, you're right, for sure. I would not fold this. People are getting a ton of action here. Okay, this is an okay flop for us. We could have the best hand with King High. Also, this is unlikely to help our opponents. So what do you play more, like shorthanded or full table? I love shorthanded. Shorthanded is great. You get in the streets, you know? Because Be when you're playing full table, it's a lot of folding, right? The average hand strength is just so high that uh, it takes away some of the some of the moves. I don't know exactly what I want to bet on. Oh, oh, not that. I know, my keyboard is not the easiest. Down one. Probably okay. I'm just going to do a dollar. Do a dollar, <laughs> dollar is good. You should just click a dollar. Nope. Uh, okay, I guess we're checking. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, we're in the corner. I it up. I'm sorry. It's my keyboard. Use the numpad on I the was, side. I was pressing the... the you were, you were, you're a level up. That's the... I pressed the wrong button. Yeah, maybe in Denmark they have the decimal place, so spot up or something. Oh. Yeah, it's because <laughs> I'm, I'm used to my Danish <laughs> language keyboard. That's why. Really? I was just kidding. No, yeah. I just suck. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, either we re-raise it or we uh, fold it, right? I actually don't hate calling either. We do have king high. Um, but Call? Calling I seems can, okay. That way I can blame it on you if we don't win. <laughs> oh, I hit the five. I like that. Yeah, well, we beat ace highs now. We beat ace highs and king highs. We lose to four six and seven hands have sevens in them. We don't lose to very much, though. I'm just going to call. He definitely that. could have us beat, but I think with the price we're getting, I, I would not fold here either. Get out of here trying to bluff us. Get out of here. 
He probably thought he had a straight again too. Well, Sock he, puppets, he saw man. I, had the, I made that weak, weak bet. I that's that, it. That actually, you might have made his money. That <laughs> made his money. <laughs> that's right. You put it in the corner. There. You learned from your friend. You know, you adapted to your uh, opponent over there. Air Brandon. Okay, pretty good flop for us, all in all. You like it? I mean, I'm very optimistic, generally speaking. All right, I'm better at it then. We'll see what happens. Oh, here's okay. an eight, eight on the turn. I'm not good. I'll take a 10. You'll take a 10? 10? 10 would have been great. This is an interesting spot. So I would say that of this... This is where I turn weak. I, I think that's okay because you have to think about, like, the, the guy on the button limped and then called. So he, yeah. he probably has something that isn't going to fold on a three, right? Yeah. Like, let's say he had ace-jack on the flop. He's not going to fold now in three pairs. There's no reason he would change his mind. So I think checking is fine. It could even go check around, which is, which is definitely possible. You know, it's, it's, this guy well, could... I mean, compared to betting again, I feel like... I, I, just don't think, money, right? I just don't think it's a very credible bluff. Like, what are we, what's the story we're trying to sell these guys? Yeah. And uh, the fact that there are two opponents, it's likely that one of them is going to continue. Yeah. I mean, if we had spades, I would would continue to consider betting if we had a better straight draw I'd consider betting I, I would actually still consider betting in this spot too but I, I don't mind giving up you know given that he's kind of short stacked we're in kind of like an awkward type of situation so now the, the puppy uh, set out or the, what do you call it the it's Muppet? a sock puppet sock puppet that's right can you tell it's a little no you I can't have those in Denmark no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh? I understand I understand now this is heads up we gotta have to go to the table right after I take this guy's chips that's right um, so who's on, on the button? You're on the button. It, it's uh, because the guy sat out. You actually have position and big blind, which is sweet. So, so he's not going to get it easy. No. Man, he, this guy calls a lot, right? Oof. It's a pretty good flop. That All the kings. Good. See? So in this spot... Oh, well. Okay. <laughs> That's Hello. not too hard. Thank you for $7. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm very polite. Nice. You want to you wanna ring the bink bell over there? You can ring the... Uh, nice. <laughs> nice. That is How awesome. How much would you have bet? If he had checked, I would have bet like a dollar, I think, would have been great. It was a $3 pot, right? Yeah, I would have bet kind of on the small side. You want him to. Because, he, because the reason is that uh, on, on a king-king-ace board, there really aren't too many hands Except that he ace. can show up with. Yeah. yeah, so we want him to stick around. We want to encourage that. You want to find another table? We can if you want. All right, hold on a sec, guys. We'll find another table. All right, so we're back. We posted 50 cents donated to the poker community. Yeah, this guy made a serious, serious little... I, I actually think his raise is fine because there are two guys who posted dead behind him. So because there's an extra dollar in the pot, you should raise pretty big here. Yeah. Have you ever played in a game that has straddles in there? Or do you know what straddles are? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So yeah, so in that kind of game, you'd always raise your raise size, and that's kind of what this is here. There's a dollar extra in the pot, so... I'm confused because this is... a more expensive than before, right? Yeah, we're, we're playing a, a, a little bit bigger here. I don't know if you can take the heat of a quarter, half dollar. But we were playing 25 before, right? Yeah, and now we're playing 50 cents, so everything will be that's doubled. That's why I thought it was a big... Uh, bet. Yeah, okay, yeah, so that's that's a, that's a true, too. So can we fill it up? Yeah, you can only buy in for half stacks at the uh, nine, nine hundred tables. All right. Let's see. A lot of calls here. A lot of calls here. Okay. I don't, I don't like that. You like that? I, I don't. I don't love it, but it's a type of a flop that isn't going to connect with our opponents too often. Would you bet that against three? I, I would seriously consider betting here. We have a three straight. There are so many good turn cards we can try to bluff on. Jacks and queens, and yeah, I think three dollars is great here. Feel, half half feel, pot seems good. If uh, if the, if either of these, if both of these guys behind us fold, even if the big blind continues with like a four or whatever, like a four is not a great hand in this spot. We can put no. so much pressure on our opponents. Yeah. What about um, this guy? If if against two people defending, I would usually give up here. Yeah. Um. You know, because if he has a hand like two sevens, he's probably not folding too often. I mean, I would seriously consider bluffing, but I all think checking is fine. You know, you I still I, take a stab at it here. Given that we don't know either of our opponents, I'm totally fine with giving up. But um, I think I would seriously consider bluffing here if we thought both of these guys had like pocket fives, pocket sixes, maybe the first guy has ace queen or something like that. If we thought that was possible, then we could get in there. Yeah. But uh, I think I think check folding in this spot is very, very viable. It is, it is full ring, so they're going to be a little bit stronger than, than the average, you know, poker idiot would be. So there's that. I'm going to fill it up. Don't want to play short stacked, huh? Give me all the chips. I get, well... We just lost you know, five bucks. We got max them in the it. pain. Hey, I'm I'm not arguing with you here. I'm not arguing with you here. 
So I don't think you've been on running up since all the welterweight shakedown has happened. George St. Pierre is out. Robbie Lawler fighting Johnny Hendricks. How do you feel about all that kind of kind of silliness, huh? Yeah, a lot of lot of good fights coming up. I'm looking forward to watching them. Yeah, should be some should be some sick ones. I don't think I've actually even uh, I think I've seen you, but uh, uh, actually I don't think I have seen you actually since Anderson broke his leg in that. I mean, how do you feel about that whole situation? Obviously, as uh, oh, I think no. I saw you, but I don't think we've done anything. Jim, we didn't talk yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was. That was pretty nasty. Pretty, pretty crazy. But I called Wegman. White Wegman. You did. That's though, right. You know? so That's right. You, you I don't did. Know if you got the bet in, but you know, I, I did. Of course, I did. I had a bet. I, I thought I had an emotional free roll because I bet on Weidman and I was rooting for Anderson. So I was like, how can I lose this? And then I still felt awful after because of Anderson's leg and everything. Yeah, that was, that was well, yeah, that was not a, uh, not one I've of the most. It in Thai boxing fights, but yeah, uh, and, all, and yeah, it's. It sucks. It's always the guy kicking, never the guy blocking, you know? It's always the guy kicking. Right. I was actually kind of thinking about that. Like, if, like, you know, if you, uh, is there any way you can, like, as a defender, can you, can you have, like, a similar sort of injury by, like, you know, you'd think shin on shin is kind of a 50-50 type of a situation, but I guess that's not the case? I think, just like if you take two sticks. Yeah. And you take one, one you hold it still, the other one you smash it into the other, usually. This is the one that one breaks. Still, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Physics with Martin Kampman. Physics, yep. <laughs> that could be your YouTube show. It would be it would be great. What's uh I gotta come up with some more ideas though? We gotta do some brainstorming. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can't do fair. the stick every single time. Yeah, I guess we'll have to do some other things. But okay. I I love it. People would love to watch that, I think, generally speaking. What's the what's the word for physics in Danish? Physik. Physik? Ah, physik with Martin Kampman. I would definitely same. watch. Physics, physik. I like that. Okay. Uh, I, I could do that. I liked physics, actually. That was one of my favorite uh, subjects in school. Physics and math and stuff. I liked, I liked the... What do you I, think? I, I didn't like all the, the you know, you got to read a story or a poem. Or of course. Like, oh. Of course. But you enjoyed physics, though. That was one of my favorite subjects. Uh, that's one of them. Do you think uh, if I had a bet that I had to learn Danish in a month... And you had to be the coach. So if someone offered me oh, a bet. I was about to say, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that says you're, what do you now think of my I'm, chances? I'm on your side now. Oh. Okay. No, I was saying, if you, had to, if you had to teach someone Danish, someone like me, for example, I had a month. And then in a month from now, I had to go and give a speech to like a bunch of like eighth grade Danish students. Do you think I could make, get away with that and not be laughed at? Or? Maybe we change to first grade. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe first grade? Okay, okay. I don't know. Maybe I'm a quick study. You don't know? Maybe Maybe it's possible. Oh, I think we can. I don't know about making a speech. Maybe we, you know. Yeah, I can say. A sandwich or something I can like say that. we're here to learn. <laughs> okay, okay, fair enough. You should talk with uh, Mike Pyle. Actually, he speaks. Uh, he speaks some Danish. He lived there yeah. for two years. Cool. I'd say he uh, probably speaks like a three-year-old or something like that. You know? Nice. Yeah. Really <laughs> two years, <laughs> three-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's. I I, I feel He's like it's a kind of a phrases down and stuff like that. I feel like it's kind of a hard language to to learn generally, right? It, it's pretty hard language to learn. Yeah. yeah. All right. A lot of uh, there's a lot of weird sounds like the J's are always scary to me as an J. American speaker. All the secret little J's in there. Like there's a run up warrior whose name is Matt, and then like I H J J S. I H. I'm making that up a little bit, oh. but there's at least like there's at least like one J and an I after that. We got that. three uh, letters. Do you guys don't have? We have. A, U, uh, O. Right. Like I've never made those noises with. in my life. Yeah. Especially, <laughs> but especially the, uh, oh, you can say it, but especially the, the U uh, sound is yeah. very hard for uh, foreigners to pronounce. Right. Like there's a tongue twister in Danish. It's a uh, Sure. And uh, <laughs> it, it's basically it's like a... What does that mean? It's like a pudding, like a red pudding with the uh, cream. Uh -oh. It means like red pudding with cream. It's, okay. It's like a tongue twister. Got you. Try it. I couldn't even begin oh. to begin the first syllable of what you said. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Huh? All right. That was pretty good. All right. Yeah. Nice. We'll take that back. Ready? To <laughs> <laughs> nice. Get ready out there, gamblers. We're going to make prop bets See, with now me. we're on the full table. We're not, we're not getting enough action. Yeah, it's the, it's the problem of this. But we'll play another Orbit out. And uh, if, uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, <laughs> gotta let us know. Uh, you're uh, Martin Kamen on Twitter, right? Or Martin underscore Kamen. 
Martin Kamen. Martin Kamen on Twitter. Definitely got to tweet me, Jason Somerville, and Martin Kamen. And let us know. Do more of these if you enjoyed them. If you want to see the next adventures of, uh, of physique uh, on Run It Up, you can let us know. It would be great. We slash could do poker. it. Slash poker. Yeah, yeah. You know, we'll learn Danish, slash, learn some yeah, physics. Slash, slash learning Danish. It's great. We'll do it all. We'll have a, you know, Martin Kamen day. I'll sure. Bring, I'll, bring a, I'll bring a new Danish tongue twister. <laughs> <laughs> nice. This is great. We'll corner the Danish poker market. I'm sure there are plenty of of, of you know Danish poker players out there. This is great. You can become the the, the new. Uh, do you know uh, Patrick Antonius? He's Swedish. Oh, he's Swedish. Who's yeah. the Gus? Gus, Gus, Gus is. Uh, uh, that's Denmark. right. Yep. You could replace Gus Hansen. He's uh, old, ten years old. He's, you could be the next Gus Hansen. You know. Who needs him? Sounds good. Sounds good. All you have to do is start is you know get the ability to gamble for millions of dollars and you'll be right there. Yeah. No big deal. And and million of dollars. Too. What 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 do you think? Okay, yeah. What what do you think? You gotta you have would, something to gamble with first. Would you rather if I if I'm I had the twenty five dollar table right now? That's that's, that's still, right. Still a way to go. That's right. If I if I said for your your net worth, you could either play Gus Hansen at a heads up deep stacked poker game, or you could fight a heavyweight of your choice. For t if you win, you double your net worth. How which which of those would you rather take? High stakes poker against a Gus Hansen type, or you could fight against. Uh, a Any, random UFC heavyweight. There's a lot of heavyweights that sucks, man. <laughs> there's some tough ones out there, of course, but I think the skill level generally in, in heavyweight is not as good as it is in the smaller weight. It's yeah. gotten a lot better. We want to see it now. I'm thinking about making moves here just because I'm getting bored. Because I know it's full ring. It, that's that's, that's the full dangerous, ring. The dangers of full ring game. That's full ring for you. But yeah, no, okay, I, I guess that makes sense. No, I don't want to talk shit in the heavyweight division, but I think generally the skill level in heavyweight is not as good as it is in the smaller weight classes. Sure, sure. I mean, that, that definitely seems like that makes sense. If you look at, like, historically the division, generally speaking, like, you know, obviously that definitely, that right definitely makes sense. Right now, there's some good ones out there, you know, like Kane, like, and... Uh, I feel like Travis Brown just had a big win Brown, off Josh Barnett. Like, he, look, he seems like he's got, yeah. got it down. Because now you have, usually there was these big guys that, were just big but didn't have really skills but now like a guy like brown has you know power skills, and skills and he's yeah got this, the huge size too so you saw his fight against barnett where he ended with the fight with the elbows and yeah, stuff do you elbows. do you agree that if if you could take a fighter like travis brown and put him in the ufc even like five or, or ten years ago though like if you put a guy like that because I, I went back and i watched all the first 20 ufcs recently and with all the no ruleness of, of it it's a lot of ufc yeah if you uh if you uh if you went back and could employ the tactics he's using with his elbows to the back of people's heads and all all the crazy things that you could do back in the day like no one really did that you know what i mean like there weren't yeah, really you've ever seen gary goodrich oh no no they definitely goodrich, don't, don't, don't get me wrong and, 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 it, it definitely happens but i'm just saying like imagine a guy like travis brown back then with like in a no rules set type of a setting like I, he would be career enders i would think with his crazy elbows i don't know i uh those those look pretty painful to be honest yeah those do not seem uh like the greatest of things <laughs> to experience do you uh here you just won that with king high uh, oh i don't think that was our queen nine hand i don't know what we, we folded out. what did we fold uh 10 three no big deal all right jack and nine now it's action time this dilbert guy joined the table when we joined the table did he he ran it up hell yeah he did are you sure about that I think he joined the table when we did. He posted right at the same time we did, I think. He taking his seat instead, then. That's right. Damn it. What do you think? you think this is... Nope. Right? I think this is perfect so far. Just because we, we haven't done much? Our hand is fine. We're in the cutoff. We're in a perfectly fine position. Our hand is perfectly fine. Everything about this is a perfectly fine uh, situation, I think. Hopefully somebody calls or, you know, us are winning 75 sweet, sweet cents, I guess. Mm -hmm. Ballin. <laughs> Ballin. Ballin. That's oh, right. I'm going to ring the bell for that one. No, <laughs> you, can leave, you can leave the bell alone for that one. That's just fine. All right, so I'll probably play three more hands here. You can click auto post if you want on the top side there. We've been actually playing for 40 minutes, if you can believe it. 40, 40 sweet running up minutes. It's not the worst thing, right? This is what I do five days a week. I sit here, I talk. The audience is great, you know? Aren't they nice out there? They're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing short of amazing. Yes, that's right. Hey, did you see that pile of tickets I have over there? I have. Oh wow, is that all UFC tickets? This is all UFC tickets for yeah. UFC 169. How does, uh, win that? 
they win them by sending me an email, dearjcarver at gmail.com, and send me something creative and, uh, and or funny in some way. Show the stack right here. Yeah, show the stack, yeah. This is a serious stack. If you do not yeah, want a this, I don't know what you're thinking about. That's right. Look at this right here. Boom. Look at that. How nice is that, people? That's a lot of... I could mean, be you. You I'm could join me. And, and I'm going to sit with all the run of the warriors. We're going to have a section all to ourselves. That's a lot of uh, tickets. That's a lot of tickets. I'd, uh, that's right. I'd hit him up for some tickets for sure. That's right. So we're going to we're going to Jersey Jersey next week, doing a whole bunch of cool things for all of our Jersey run up warriors. Gonna be quite the thing. This is pretty good all in all. I think my, my general my general diagnosis of your poker game, I'm actually I, I gotta say, like I thought you were gonna be a little bit uh more rusty or at least like kind of like unevolved in some regards. I don't know. I'm just thinking like <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, you could have about the push I I think I, I'm actually I think you're you did pretty well all in all. I was like, trying to say I you would have think I would suck. I, I thought you were going to be worse. Yeah, for sure. You're playing very well. I think they're the, the most the majority of the things that I would critique are the bet sizings. Like I really think that you're like you're you're still making inefficient bets, but that's a very common mistake. And I think you're too big. You're at least getting right when to bet, which is a which is a key thing. Like I yeah. feel like that a lot of some of the, some of the mistakes you made will just be smoothed out with experience. Like you're like oh, I don't know what to do. Well, if you play that spot a hundred times, then you will. Yeah. So I think that uh, I I like yeah. your I like oh, your prospects. This guy is making bank. We should have taken his CDs. Yeah, look at that. Up to oh, almost a hundred. Next hand is the last hand, right? So we can Next play. hand is the last hand. That's it. Oof, that's a definite raise right there. <laughs> I like how you think. <laughs> I like how you think. Who needs to fold people? Check three. Come at him. Well, it's the last hand, right? It's the last hand. That's right. You can't leave people. That's right. To they, fold. they want action. Yeah. They want action, exactly. That's right. Okay, so we've got one person in position. Yeah. Two people total. Well, we want to. We want the action, right? It's an okay flop. Oh, if nobody has an ace flop. or a queen, we're gonna win. Great flop, right? Because we we got an ace. Okay. <laughs> So I like that. 250 is like exactly where you should be. No. A three is fine too. You know, it's like darts. You're in the right region, you know, which is, which is fine, you know. Like, again, think about the kinds of hands he's going to fold for 250 and the kinds of hands he's going to fold for $3. There's really no difference, right? It's just Boom. a more efficient bluff. Nice Act job. The Hit job. the bell one last time for the road. Nice job. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, this is awesome. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget, tweet me and Martin Kamen, Martin Kamen on Twitter, and tell him, hey, thanks for coming by Running Up, Running Up Apprentice over here. If you want to be the next Running Up Apprentice, you can send me an email, dearjcarver at gmail.com. You can send me a video of yourself playing Ultimate Poker, and uh, I'll review all that, and that will be sweet. And, uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. This thanks was awesome. Thanks you you got to give us the old peace sign-off because this is really the only way to do it. Peace. Peace.